if I do my job properly, it's to give the team a website that's for a small to medium sized business, uh, you know, that's, you know, five to maybe 20 pages, kind of like max. Um, you know, if they don't have their own brand identity, that gets, you know, shot across the loop, in which case we're getting stuff back pretty quickly. And then they can kind of like chop stuff up pretty quickly. So we have a, um, we're implementing right now a really cool cloud-based option, which allows us to kind of like drag and drop frameworks straight into uh, WordPress. So within 10 minutes, you have like the whole skeleton uh, of the website really ready to go. And then my teams, basically, or then it would go to my front ends and they would do um, imagery and content. Um, you know, I just use stuff like type.io, you know, to give them some font family and paragraph styling kind of, you know, bits and pieces. And so once you have like the systems that we have set up, there's there's no need to kind of like, you know, like start from scratch, you know, like bring in your, you know, panel, like work on your padding, you know, like, you know, like have a look at how an image is going to work. Like we, what we do is, you know, just kind of like bring in existing kind of like frameworks, you know, um, you know, from, from the cloud um, and then, and then put that um, company's kind of um, brand identity over, uh, over the top. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we are chilling out here this morning on the Agency Hour live in the Digital Mavericks Facebook group and also in your AirPods or your Samsung Galaxy Buds Plus. I'm really sorry if you own a pair of those. Wow. I was given a pair of those and I tried to connect them to my Mac and all the forums say, yes, we play nicely with other platforms. Eh, wrong. They are a pile of crap, those things. So uh, if you are listening in the Samsung Galaxy Plus Buds, I do apologize. Uh, But welcome to the Agency Hour. And we have a very, very, very big announcement today on the show. There's only one drinking vessel on my desk, but we have two guests. That's right. We have two very special guests on the Agency Hour today. And we have a massive announcement. It's going to send shockwaves through the industry. I just know it. Uh, If you listen to this episode or watch this episode, share it with your friends and tell them you can't believe the news. I think I'm going to just dive straight in and drop the bomb. Uh, We have two guests in the waiting room who are wanting to join us. They uh, will be joining us separately, but they have an interconnected story. So welcome to the Matrix, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, So, ladies and gentlemen, this is my last ever episode of the Agency Hour as CEO of Agency Mavericks Proprietary Limited. (gasps) What does that mean? I'm either leaving the Agency Hour or I'm leaving my post as CEO of Agency Mavericks. Which could it be? Ooh. Wrong button. No, wrong button. Ah. There we go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is official as of 5 p.m. tonight, Thursday the 30th of June here in Australia. I have been fired. No, I haven't. I'm resigning as CEO of Agency Mavericks. That's right. I'm stepping down. The team has spoken. I've taken a vote and made it very clear that if I don't leave, they'll push me. I'm kidding. I'm leaving uh, as CEO, but don't worry, I'm not leaving the company. I'm not uh, going on to do anything else. I'm staying in the company. I'm just moving roles and I am stepping down as CEO. And I would now like to take this opportunity to, by the way, let us know in the chat. Uh, Zach Tepek says, I already can't believe it. It's true. It's true, Zach. It is true. I am resigning as CEO of Agency Mavericks. And there's a very good reason for this. I'm not the best person for the job. And it pains me to admit that publicly. doesn't actually pain me that much. Um, There is someone else who is far better equipped to do the job and wants to do the job. And uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce you, ladies and gentlemen, to the new CEO of Agency Mavericks, 
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome all the way from Christchurch in New Zealand, Everly Bryant. Hello. Hey, hey. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Now, how are you? I'm very, I'm very good. Now, look, Emily, you fired me, so I don't know how, I don't know how popular you're going to be here, but uh, <laughs> tell. Uh, I don't just know. It might the... be quite popular. <laughs> you probably will be. Uh, just let everyone know who doesn't know you. Who are you? Where are you from? And what are you doing here? And why the hell are you taking over as CEO of Agency Mavericks? <laughs> sure. Well, I actually started out as a customer. Uh, few years back now um, spoke to you Troy on a on a sales call and I'd been following you for a long long time and you know I was eight months pregnant and wanting to join <laughs> Mavericks and you were like whoa <laughs> might be good to slow down a little so I um, bought some courses instead and and followed along that and that really helped my agency a lot because I didn't want to go back to work full-time back then wanted to grow the business and managed to do that and whilst I was following you and working through everything I saw an opportunity to work for you and that was in you know, running and growing the Facebook group and creating a strategy to grow that so that's how I kind of got my foot in the door and worked my way up I guess they that's say. right and, that, that was your yeah. that was your uh, that was your fire starter and your accelerator wasn't it let me run mm -hmm. this Facebook group for you because you don't know what you're doing you idiot let me come in and run this for you and help you grow this Facebook group this very Facebook group that you are watching this in right now was uh way back when when did you start with us was it uh that was September 2020 2020 right almost mm. two years ago wow yeah um and you came in and you grew the Facebook group. And did, I mean, back then, I think we had 5,000 members in the Facebook group. And now we're up to over 12,000 members. So it's been remarkable. And I'd had that Facebook group since about, I don't know, 2015 or something. So I mean, I hadn't, we hadn't really put much of an effort into growing it. It had been through a couple of iterations. So you came in and grew that group. And then uh, what happened? Uh, so did that quite successfully as you mentioned and then really I couldn't help myself I started to see some other things in the the business that I kind of wanted to get stuck into and uh just kind of started from there really and then I had a good chat with you and Eva back then and came on board as head of content officially and that was that would have been March last year and mm -hmm. that kind of quickly grew into more of the marketing role and then um after Eva had left and getting close to Christmas last year, there was a bit of a gap in the operational side of things that mm. we'd kind of highlighted. And I jumped into that space. And then as you've already shared, when you were on holiday and uh, over Christmas mm. this year and you weren't quite ready to, to come back mm. and ring me on a Sunday and said, <laughs> I'm not coming back to work. So that was the, yeah. uh, I probably did, to be honest, have a few thoughts <laughs> in my head at that time, but I, it was the, uh, it was a, a great way to do it, and I jumped straight in and kind of haven't looked back. Yeah, that's right. I mean, technically, you've been doing this job for the last few months. So, uh, and for me, I have realised, and it's taken me a long time. It took, it's taken me years to get to this point, but then the decision actually happened quite quickly. And I think it happened mm -hmm. really while I was camping on that holiday in January. I just did not want to come back into the role that I was in. I just did not, I did, the, the amount of, the amount of incoming, the amount of information that you need to manage as, when you're in the big chair is a lot. And I'd been doing it for a long time. And I felt like um, one, I was a bit cooked to be honest. I was, you know, I was like, I just don't like, I remember I messaged Pete on Voxer and said something like, Hey mate, just letting you know, I'm not coming back uh, this week uh, or next week. Probably, I'm going to take another couple of weeks because if I'm in a meeting and anyone asks me to make a decision, it's going to be the fastest decision I make just to get the thing off my desk and out of my head. And it's not going to be the best decision for the company. I'm just going to say do whatever you want because I don't want to think about it. And so then I just gave myself another couple of weeks. And during that time, I realised. I'm most valuable to this business if I'm doing what I'm really good at and what I really enjoy, which is sitting in this chair, talking to customers, educating, inspiring, motivating, coaching, making products, creating courses, and also probably dabbling a little bit in the marketing side of the business. 
And there's all this other stuff that has to happen that I'm not the best at and I don't really have the attention span for, to be honest. Like, I, I'm a, I mean, I'm across it, like the financial spreadsheets, hiring people, managing job scorecards for people, you know, partnerships, all, all this stuff that I'm kind of across. But if I'm honest with myself, and it did take me a long time to kind of be honest with myself and say, dude, you don't, it's okay to admit that you don't really want to do that anymore. And in fact, it's best for everyone if you just get out of the way and let someone else do it who's better at it and who wants to do it. And mm -hmm. um, so I think it was maybe, I don't know, February or March this year where I kind of said, hey, this is what I'm thinking. And we picked the 1st of July, which is the start of a new financial year here in Australia, as the uh, as the date. So as of tomorrow morning, you officially take over. Um, mm -hmm. What are you most nervous about? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I, I don't know exactly what I'm, I'm more excited than nervous, really, mm. because I just see so many opportunities and potential for us to grow and keep serving our customers. And, you know, we have such an amazing team and they really mm. pull out everything to, to get results for our clients. So I'm just really excited. Like I'm not mm. really too nervous. <laughs> Mm, that's good. And we have also identified that there's, with you moving into this role, there's mm -hmm. probably going to be a bit of a hole in operations. Mm -hmm. And so what have we done there? Yes. Yeah, so we have hired Anna. So another Kiwi, we're, we're growing the, the Kiwi branch, uh, yep. who worked for me in my company, actually. So I know her well, and she's a real, um, a real doer. And so she's come in with um, the title of operations assistant and also helping Troy. Um, she'll be, you know, your EA as well, which is fantastic. Mm. And Great. yeah, she's already <laughs> saving a lot of, a lot of time for me. And I feel like I'm kind of getting a bit of my sanity back. So I know awesome. you're watching this, Anna. So thank you. Hey, Anna. Uh, <laughs> glad to have you here on the team, Anna. Uh, hey, for those that are just joining, uh, the big announcement that we've just made this morning is that I am resigning as CEO of Agency Mavericks and Emily Bryant, who is here with me on the stage, is taking over as of tomorrow morning. It is official now. We will be putting out a blog post about this and we'll be uh, emailing everyone we know and letting them know and I'll be announcing it on Facebook and LinkedIn and probably doing a TikTok video. I'm joking. And... Um, uh, doing my happy dance uh, because I'm no longer in the big seat. Emily Bryant is taking over. She's a Kiwi. I uh, also figured out yesterday that I think we're about 70% females in this business uh, these days. Oh, yeah, we probably are actually. Yeah, which is great. I love it, by the way. I, frankly, personally, I mean, you know, no offence to the blokes who work here, but I just think women are far more organised and better at most things. Um, so <laughs> there you go. Uh, that's controversial. Now, the obvious question is, uh, what happened to your agency? Yes. Well, mm -hmm. I quickly identified last year jumping into, you know, work with Agency Mavericks full-time. And even though I had run the agency on the side of a full-time job before, it just wasn't sustainable. It wasn't going to happen. And I would have been, you know, doing a disservice to my customers. So, Thankfully, within Mavericks, there's, you know, a lot of other agency owners. And so um, I reached out to someone and had the, you know, the conversation with him. It was ongoing over a few months, but the, the final decision was really quick. So I sold um, ba basically the whole company, but the website and the care plans and the domains and everything to another Kiwi who is the guest on the show, Mike Spratt. He is, and I think now's a good opportunity to bring Mike Spratt from Gherkin Media onto the stage. Mike Spratt, how are you, my friend? Never better, thanks, mate. Yeah, really good. Awesome. Although, thanks. I should be a little bit angry with you for stealing Anna off me. So, <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> oh, whoops. Yeah, sorry. sorry, mate. <laughs> share was, and uh, share alike. Share and share yeah. alike. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, Adam really Silverman. I think Adam Silverman's still pissed with me for stealing Laurie Ann back too. Once we 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 <laughs> we loaned Laurie Ann to Adam for a project, and and then uh, said, "Are you still using Laurie Ann?" He said, "No." I said, "Great." So we took her, and then a couple of weeks later, he came back and he said, "Can I have Laurie Ann back?" And I said, "No, get your hands off." <laughs> I didn't. I actually didn't know that Anna had been working with you, Mike. Yeah, I'm going yeah, to plead. Yeah. I'm going to plead ignorance here. Hey, don't blame me. We've got a new CEO. Blame her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I take all the blame. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. Like you know, it's one of those things. You know can't help progression and um, the, the role that you guys can provide for Anna is, you know, 10 times better than the one that, uh, you know, I had uh, for her, which was just, you know, basically 
you know, booking calls for me, getting getting the book cleaned up and, and stuff like that. So uh, onwards and upwards for uh, cool. that. It's all good. Very, very gracious of you. Thank you very much. Uh, well, now, Emily, I'm sure you're very busy uh, as a CEO uh, or, or a, a new CEO as a company. So we might let you off the hook and, and let you go and get back to work while Mike and I uh, stay here and just jazz out for a bit about uh, his business model and what it's like acquiring agencies. Sounds good to me. <laughs> awesome. Thank Thanks, so Emily. Thanks, Thanks for joining so in. Appreciate it. Uh, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Emily Bryant from New Zealand taking over as CEO of Agency Mavericks. And I would now like to formally introduce you to one of our Mavericks Club members from New Zealand as well, Mike Spratt. Hey, Mike, whereabouts in New Zealand are you for those who are geographically curious? I'm in Auckland, yeah, in Auckland. So. In Auckland. Um, and so how did the – first of all, let's talk about uh, – quickly talk about the acquisition of Emily's business to close that loop, and then we'll talk about your business model, which I think is super interesting. Uh, how did the acquisition come about for Emily's agency? I, w- I want to say I, I, w- I want to say it was direct. I think she tapped me on the shoulder and, and said, hey, would you like to, to buy my business? Um, and it was something – acquisition was something that we had – um, on our mind for for a while, we were in a you know in a, in a situation where we had everything that you need you know to to acquire another business um, seamlessly or as seamlessly as you can acquire a business. Um, and I believe she showed me the business, and I said, "Hey, look, for these three reasons, uh, you know, it's not too risky I, I can't remember but i said hey there's a couple of things that um you know would be a no for me right now and then what's so cool about emily is like within no time at all she tapped me back on the shoulder and she said hey i fixed all of those things that you didn't like and i was like really she's like yeah i fixed it all do you want to buy it now and i was like if you've really fixed it i'll buy it like tomorrow i think we you know we we you know went through a letter of offer and um, wrapped things up, you know, I want to say with at least within at least kind of like two, three days. And so that's, wow. you know, testament to her to, you know, take what, you know, perceivably, was perceivably could have been like a, you know, like not a blow, but like, oh, you know, sure. this guy doesn't want to buy my business, you know, and, and, and quickly went away, fixed the things that I didn't like or that I perceived as risky and then came back. And then the rest of the deal was easy, as I said, you know, you know, from from letter of offer to you know, um, uh, you know, purchase and, and taking the reins was, I think, yeah, two or three days. So, um, and how, how I've got so many questions about this. How have the clients transit? How like was there any pushback or any resistance from Emily's existing client base when you were introduced or when they kind of met you and the team? No, I can tell you because I'm a data nerd. Um, <laughs> I love it. So we've, I know that it's definitely less, um, less than five. So because we, 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 Emily's isn't the only business that we've acquired. Um, but um, three, three out of 90 uh, wow. are discharged. Uh, the rest wow. remained active. Uh, so what's that? Two and a half percent. That's um, fantastic. Rate. Yeah. Um, and uh, for us, you know, for the, the value of which we bought the book to the value of the book in our business now is something in the re- in the region of a 5x or a 6x wow. recurring ev- annual revenue. So us acquiring business has become one of those things where it's <laughs> mutually beneficial for all three par- parties involved. Mm-hmm. It's really great for us because we get fast growth. Uh, it's really good for the um um, clients that we acquire because, um, well, I've got a team of 12. Emily was lifting up that whole agency, you know, on her own mm. two sh- you know, shoulders, you know, doing a fantastic job with, with mm. one per person. Um, but with a, a bigger team coming in um, means, you know, that there's a wider array of, um, you know, digital products and services available to those customers. And then obviously it's better for the clients that we acquire as well because, you know, they get not a better level of service, you know, um, but, um, you know, they, you know, yeah. Yeah, so it's good for us. It's good, oh, sorry, and so mm. it's good for Emily as well because she gets mm. clean. Sorry. Yeah. So, so good for us. Good for Emily. Yeah. Good for and clients, yeah. and it is. It, it, it's not necessarily a better level of service, but it's more attention. It's more resources. It's more availability. It's it, it, there's more skill set on the team, so they can get their problems solved. And you've got a you've got more infrastructure than someone who's yeah. essentially running the agency on their own with you know a couple of freelancers or contractors helping out. Let's. I want to talk about because you've ha- you've acquired a couple of agencies now. I think. Uh, what is 
what do you, why is acquiring an agency so beneficial for you? What just explain your business model to people? Yeah, okay. Um, so what do we do? So we operate a little bit kind of like differently to your average agency. Um, and that came about from joining Mavericks. That, that wasn't something that we um, inherently kind of did pre Mavericks, but it was something that jumped out at, at me during Mavericks. So when we came into mm. our first 12 months of Mavericks, the Mavcon that we jumped into was focusing on care plans and signature systems. So the, mm -hmm. the, the two products at the ends of, I guess you're what you would call like the scope of which you can sell a customer. Mm -hmm. And up until then, um, I'd never heard of a care plan. I'd never heard of a signature system. And so mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm that guy, I just went and like sold three signature systems, which was like our alpha, you know, kind of like test run of a, a signature system. Um, kind of like almost a little bit kind of like naively and mm -hmm. I you know took your advice which was to you know go through a process of um you know taking all of your hosting clients you know introducing them to a new kind of like proposition uh, of a care plan um and you know kind of uh, firing the ones that that didn't kind of like take the upgrade so you have this kind of like this cleanup and so what's cool for me is acquiring a business well acquiring like a business is like the ones that we have they have lots of small recurring revenue products like email registration and hosting and so that might sit at around the kind of like 20 to 40 dollars a month um you know kind of uh, range of of services and then what we can do is we can kind of like wrap a care plan around them and five six to 10x, you know, the the the, the recurring revenue, um, you know, on, on those products because they haven't been taken up to that higher level of service yet. And so that's what mm -hmm. we look for. So, you know, the, 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 the agencies that we look for, you know, preferably are ones that have had a good track record selling email uh, registration and hosting, mm -hmm. but haven't talked to their clients about uh, a care plan or any post-launch products, um, post-launch mm -hmm. products are your performance products, SEO, digital marketing, um, mm -hmm. you know, all, all of that kind of stuff. And so that's where we've said no recently as well. We've been offered businesses that it's like, hey, here's, um, here's 20, you know, like websites that are perfect and they're all on care plans. You know, that's not a business that we would like, like to buy because we can't add any value. The, the value is mm. already added. You know, and um, you know, you know, on the other instance, almost the like, almost the scrappier the business, the better for me to acquire. Um, mm. There was a really cool chapter in a book uh, that I read that was a huge course correction for me. And when we've had this conversation before, and you mm. know, the chapter we're going to like the whole reason of the chapter is actually a personal book, not a business book. But the chapter was called. Notice that opportunity lies where responsibility responsibility has been abdicated, and that is yeah, like I so love that true, so much. So true in the game. Can, can you just I can think. you just repeat? Can you just repeat that? So the the the, the, the chapter is called "Notice that responsibility lies uh, responsibility lies where uh, sorry notice that um, opportunity lies where responsibility has been abdicated," and so mm. the in the web game there. I mean, you just have you just have a look through the website, have a, have a, have a look through the internet, and you'll notice that um, the upkeep of websites is almost non-existent. So, what mm. what normal businesses will do is they'll buy a website for three grand, mm -hmm. and then you know, and then it just sits there. The mm -hmm. agency sits in the in, in the red, you know, you know, from a service you know level to to that kind of like business. And then maybe charges them some money for hosting, you know, or, or whatever. And and then the, the, the client's like, well, what, what does what comes with hosting? It's like, well, nothing. It's just space on the server. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, well, instead, then what does it look like if I re-engage with you? It's like, well, that looks like fees. It's like, oh, okay, well, I bought this website. I, I don't really know what to do with it. Now I've got these like monthly things for reporting and hosting and, and, and all of that kind of stuff. And, you know, that's annoying. That's just a cost, you know. Mm -hmm. Then if I re-engage, there's fees, and inevitably I'm going to have to buy another website off this crowd, um, mm -hmm. you know, for um, in another three years or, or kind of whatever. And so, what I've just explained there is the four 
biggest pain points that a care plan, uh, you know, kind of overcomes. And so, you know, our model is either through traditional, um, you know, means like, um, you know, like a, you know, if we, we do have the ability to do like SEO and digital marketing and all the rest of it for Gherkin Media, but those all of those channels are turned off right now. Mm-hmm. The two, only two active channels that we have open is referral, mm-hmm. right? So that's a one-on-one business coming to us or acquisition where we'll buy 100 clients overnight. But fundamentally, when I have, you know, the, when, I, when I drill down to the one-on-one relationship, no matter how I acquire them, the, the, the process of showing them what, what a care plan is, is an explanation of showing them that there's not going to be any uh, cost to getting a good website launched that all of the monthly stuff is going to be covered in the cost of the care plan. The um, uh, care plan also covers any reactionary requests that you make of us to keep the website updated. Mm -hmm. And every 36 months, you get a brand new website or a website refresh. And and that is going to be wrapped up into a cash flow friendly, predictable, fixed price, small monthly service retainer sub $200. So my, my care plans range from 99 to uh, 199, depending on mm-hmm. what kind of business it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have a 100% success rate on wow. uh, upgrading at the moment. <clears throat> that'll, so, be, that'll be close to the test, but currently we're at As you grow, yeah. So there's, uh, there's so much to unpack here. First of all, uh, uh, how clear are you? So, so essentially, for, I get a free website I'm on a care plan. It's a 36 month contract. Is that right? No, we're too good. No one, we have such a low level of attrition. We don't even bother with a contract anymore. Wow. So I get a free website. I sign on for a care plan of let's call it $200 a month. And then in three years time, I get another free website. I'm going to make an assumption that you've got your, my mic is a bit hot. Somebody said, uh, I'm going to make an assumption that, uh, You've got your. <laughs> I'm going to make an assumption. I always that go red when I talk. Is that, is that right? now, now, now you've made me paranoid. No, Whatever. James Murgatroyd says that my mic is a bit hot. He's, he's saying that my microphone's a bit hot. I don't believe him. I think his headphones are a bit loud. Um, I'm going to make an assumption that you've got your process down for building these websites so fast that you, it's not costing you. Like just walk us through that. And then also I want to talk about <clears throat> how, what if a client comes along with a level of complexity where you just cannot build them a free website because it doesn't make sense? Our niche is small to medium-sized businesses, um, you know, who have a poor, no, or DIY website. So we would, <clears throat> we by, by that virtue, normally we um, don't, kind of go after complicated websites or, or, mm-hmm. or be it that's not that we don't know how to do them um yeah. so if someone comes in and it's just like super complicated or the website's massive or or kind of whatever normally it means we haven't done our job properly which is to educate our uh professional partners who send in referral or our existing clients most 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 people will give you like for like right so we look after small to medium-sized businesses we have a direct relationship with the business owner. We don't deal with like marketing managers and big corporates and stuff like that. And so it's been our experience that they'll give you like for like customers. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, we, uh, we were talking the other day about the fact that you know we had a, a website that we just did. It was an e-commerce website, um, you know, for a um, brass and woodwind uh, instrument company, and they came through, and they were like, you know, oh hey you know, this is what it is, you know, and we had a look at it and we're like, okay, like, um, if we build you this website, you know, um, it's to go on a care plan and they're like, yeah, we, we want the post launch support. And so I was like, okay, in which case, look, there's going to be some fees associated with the website because it's a super complicated, massive e-commerce kind of like project. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they had showed me signs that it was just a build, oh, we wouldn't have done it. Right. Nice. So, the, the, the fact that I could kind of, the, the fact that my processes of onboarding uh, clients and when I uh, talk to clients um, allow me to um, use what's called a, 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 a um, what's it called, a, um, 
a client scorecard, which we stole mm -hmm. from you as well. Um, mm -hmm. That has some questions in it that identify intent for post-launch. And so mm -hmm. if they don't want post-launch care and if there's no opportunity uh, for our growth plans, which is our next product up, which is the performance one, so that's post-launch, um, then we wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. um, but if they say, hey, I, I want this really kind of complicated e-commerce build, you know, it might be, hey, look, there's going to be some fees associated. Uh, and it. <clears throat> it would only be if it was going to um, go on to um, another one. But currently we only have two. Pre so we're building 65 websites right now. Only two of them fit that description. <laughs> hang on, hang on, <laughs> hang on. You're, you're building yeah. 65 websites at the moment. <laughs> yeah. And we have some on hold. <clears throat> wow. We have someone hold that I'm not even releasing into our whip yet. How, how, uh, uh, okay. So, and your team, how big is your team? How long does it well, take your team to produce a website? So if we get our positioning right and it's, uh, um, so, so here's the thing as well with a care plan, we don't just wrap our websites in care plans. And this is what I guess people should listen to if they have a normal agency I can wrap a care plan around the websites that they build as well, right? Mm. And so if they, if I perceivably see that, like we had one recently for a, a flooring company and uh, they took like six months to build the website, a website that we could have built in a day. And um, and so by the time the guy had finished, they were already obligated to finish. By the time that, they, so on day one where he's like, oh, hey, it's time to host. It's like, no, 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 no. All of that's going to Mike. So what's great with that is we get like, you know, like a, a website that someone else does, did, bring that over to our server, wrap it in the care plan. We get everything that comes after that. Mm. So of the 65 that we're building, those are ones that we're building, but that's not all of our business that's coming in at the moment because we're also, um, we can also wrap care plans around Shopify websites, which inherently have their own the services with Shopify. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we do heaps of DIY apples for apples conversion. So we eat, Wix and Squarespace's lunch all day, every day. Um, those yep. ones are great. Yep. Um, and so on, 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 a, on a project that we steal off another agency, it's the same day. Hey, this is a care plan and we can just bring your website over. It's instant income, uh, you know, for, for no real kind of um, uh, work in progress investment. Mm -hmm. On an apples to apples conversion off a DIY product, those are, uh, you know, two to three hours and, and we've ripped everything across and now have a WordPress or a Shopify version of that website to launch and wrap our um, care plan services around. One that we build, so um, depending on which staff member it lands with, but say, for example, on our fastest channel, we can come up with a really nice five to 15 page website um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, some something that we would pigeonhole in the market to be worth between three to five grand, we can build that in a day. Wow. And uh, a couple of questions here. How big is your team? I think you've already answered that. There's 12 in your team. How many developers are working on the sites and where are they in New Zealand or are they overseas? <laughs> So we have a nine to three split, New Zealand to overseas, and we mm -hmm. have um, uh, four front ends and three full stacks. Wow. Do you do design as well? If someone comes along and says, hey, we don't really have a brand, but we kind of, we've got this logo and a letterhead. Can you design an interface for us as well? Yep. Yep. So wow. we have, that That one is a, mm, that one. So 10 out of 12 of those staff, 10 have an employment contract uh, and uh, two are um, heavy contractors. So we would mm -hmm. be their biggest, you know, client, but for, for sure. other reasons. Um, yep. you know, so Luke, a guy called Luke, um, mm -hmm. does all of our, if we want something like real bespoke, like if it's like a brand exercise, something that should have no, probably normally gone to a graphic designer first, uh, we could mm -hmm. use a guy called Luke. And mm -hmm. what's funny is what's real cool you know, and this is the abundance thing that you and Mavericks talk about all the to all the time, Troy. Luke, the only really, the, really the only reason I think that he's remaining a contractor and he's kind of like not coming on full time, even though we get, you know, like you know, we we we, we kind of like dominate his, uh, you know, um, calendar because we yeah. get kind of a priority with him. The only reason I think that, no, well, not not the only reason, but the main reason why he's Keeping that is because we're actually, I'm actually helping him do what I do. 
because mm. he's like, oh man, like, you know, this is, this is, this is such, this is such a, like a simple, you know, kind of like business model. And so he and his, you know, kind of like business that he contracts to me with, um, he has something like 10 care plans now. So he's probably mm. got two and a half, you know, $3,000 mm. a month worth of uh, recurring mm. revenue um, mm. attached to, to his thing. And eventually he'll, he'll go, hey, Mike, you know, I don't want to design anymore. I just want to do this um, yeah. because, you know, it's the way that it's going to go. I, I believe it's the way that it's going to go. Yeah. Uh, for those who are watching and listening, a couple of uh, questions here. The name of the business is Gherkin Media. Uh, what's the URL? Gherkinmedia.co.nz? Yeah. Cool. Um, what, what's, your, what's your development? I know people are asking this and I'm curious as well. What's your development stack? What do you, what do you, how are you producing websites that fast? <clears throat> Um, without, so, without giving away the secret sauce, of course, no, without fine. giving away the 11, the 11 secret herbs and spices. <laughs> so we would be 90% WordPress, 10% Shopify, I, I would say some, somewhere around that split. Um, mm -hmm. And that's normally uh, client preference that, um, you know, dictates. Um, we, uh, I'd say, say, for example, from a WordPress point of view, and uh, again, it depends on the kind of like scope, but if I'm doing my job properly, it's to, you know, it's to, to take one of the clients that we buy, uh, to take a, a referral that comes in, or potentially if we kind of like see weakness and we decide to go after, uh, you know, a, a certain kind of like project. Um, if I do my job properly, it's to give the team a website that's for a small to medium sized business, uh, you know, that's, you know, five to maybe 20 pages kind of like max. Um, you know, if they don't have their own brand identity, that gets, you know, shot across the loop, in which case we're getting stuff back pretty quickly. And then they can kind of like chop stuff up pretty quickly. So we have a, um, we're implementing right now a really cool cloud-based option, which allows us to kind of like drag and drop frameworks straight into uh, WordPress. So within 10 minutes, you have like the whole skeleton uh, of the, website really ready to go and then my teams basically or then it would go to my front ends and they would do um, imagery and content um you know i just use stuff like type.io you know to give them some font family and paragraph styling kind of you know bits and pieces and so once you have like the systems that we have set up there's there's no need to kind of like you know like start from scratch you know like bring in your you know panel like work on your padding you know like you know like have a look at how an image is going to work like we what we do is you know just kind of like bring in existing kind of like frameworks you know um you know from from the cloud um and then and then put that um company's kind of um brand identity over uh, over the top and so you know and, that, and that's the thing you know like if you want to go and position for a ten thousand dollar website, um, you know, and, and and you know, design from scratch, whatever you want to use, Figma, Photoshop, you know, Illustrator, you know, kind of like whatever software that you use, and then you want to like take that into a kind of like dev, you know, a kind of environment, you know, go go through the revisions and and all of that kind of stuff, <laughs> then that's fine. That, mm. that that's fine. Like that that that's obviously like a, a kind of model that still needs to exist for certain customers. Mm. But what we win is um, stuff that they just need an affordable, you know, kind of viable functioning kind of like website. And when we go back to them and say, hey, we can actually create that for you 99 times out of 100 to a point where it's like, hey, here's a website that's 99% done. All you have to do is do your little kind of like nitpicks <clears> and <throat> stuff like that and then launch it. Um, more often than not, then that's what happens. The clients are like, wow, like, I, I look great. Mike, like I, I never knew my business was so awesome. You know, I've got to almost kind of like step up my systems now to match what it says on my kind of like a uh, uh, website. So we don't have uh, problems with imagery. We don't have problems with content. Uh, we don't have problems with like waiting for the customer on bits and uh, on, on bits and pieces like that. And we even know that they're involved and they get ultimate amount of revisions and they, you know, feel like it's their website. Um, we just have really good systems around avoiding those pitfalls that normal agencies falling into, which can cause uh, delays and stuff like that. What, there's so much about this that I love, right, is that 
you, when you first joined Mavericks, and I think there's a big lesson in this. I've heard, uh, you know, you you drank the Kool Aid, but then very quickly went, you know what, that business model is not right for us. I don't want to manage these large signature system clients on three to five k a month. Their expectations are too high. It's you know, it's it doesn't suit my team's sweet spot. Jenny Lakin has also said this in the past. She's like, it's great, everything you say is great, Troy, but it doesn't mean I have to do it all. I'm like, no, no, that's entirely right. Like, I, we're here to help you do the thing that you want to do, not. Uh, not take our approach hook, line, and sinker. But what I love about this is you've systematically made decisions about what you don't want to do. Like you don't, at the moment, you are not doing, you know, SEO campaign, campaigns and running ads for clients. You're not taking on those large clients that, that that have those large marketing retainers. You're not building complex websites and then trying to convince them to get on a care plan later. Uh, you are... There's a, even in your development workflow, there's a whole bunch of decisions that you've made that you have said, no, we're not, that's not how we do things at Gook and Media. We're doing things differently. And cutting out all of that waste is actually how you have improved the efficiency so much to the point where you can say to a local business, hey, we can, we can get you a website for free. And in fact, every three years, we'll update it and it won't cost you a cent. I mean, that is so diametrically opposed to what most agencies are doing and it's because i think you've systematically said you know that's not how we do it here we do things more efficiently and you don't it's it's you're not you're not compromising your process to try and keep the client happy yeah so we <clears throat> when we first jumped into mavs we had a, you know, one of the things I guess that I had done well up until that point was we had sold the small stuff and we had fallen in love with $8, you know. So, you know, <laughs> it was it was, it was was fine for us to, you know, like produce a website for someone or, or, or take the website and, 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 and host it, um, you know, so that we could win $8 on hosting. And so we had a, 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 an all right sized host, hosting book, maybe like 150 clients or something like that. Not, mm -hmm. not big. Uh, mm -hmm. And they were paying, you know, like $39 a month or whatever, uh, you know, plus maybe a little bit of money for registration and email and, and, and those kind of things. And um, pre-Mavs, I didn't know what a care plan was. I definitely didn't know that there was like a place where you could go, where you can talk to like 100 or in Mavs, 100 other agencies, let alone the community of 12,000 or, or, or kind of whatever, and ask for advice. Like I thought, like if I went and asked another agency for advice, they'd be like, I'm not telling you, you know, what are you talking about? Um, so when we jumped into Mavs, we we, we really dive, we, we dove straight into signature systems. Um, the one in the middle, I guess, is all your post-launch products individualized, and then a signature mm -hmm. system, which is kind of like a, a bundled approach to to everything, right? Mm. We are hyper focused on care plans, but that doesn't mean that we don't do our growth plan. So we also have a growth plan, um, which is a, um, a, a really good pro post launch product that we are pretty, we're almost finished, you know, with the systemization of it and, and all the rest of it. And we had an alpha run of signature systems, but we didn't make any money. We were yeah. good at them. The customers yeah. got good results, but we didn't yeah. make any money. Yeah. So for me, I was like, well, like we're killing it on the care plan. We're absolutely killing it. And so we, I decided that we would um, close down the signature system channel for now. And what we would focus on is getting to a million dollars worth of recurring revenue on a sub $200 a month uh, care plan, which means that we need anywhere between 418 and about 600 uh, um, websites on, on care mm -hmm. plans. We also knew mm -hmm. that to get that, it's a, it's a rule of about 90%. So... <laughs> excuse me, if you want a thousand care plans, it's probably only 900 people because a lot of people will give you more than one project. Quite a few mm. business owners will have more than one website. Mm -hmm. And so we know that we will get to a million dollars worth of annual uh, recurring revenue on a sub $200 care plan. Um, you know, uh, uh, when we reach about 412, uh, 418 to 600 clients, of which I think we've got about 350 and we are about um, $750,000 worth of um, uh, recurring revenue products sub $200 a month, which is massive. It's like huge. Wow, that's so nuts. What that, 
what that means for me is on the first of the month, I'm covered on mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. Right? On the first of the month, when my recurring <clears throat> revenue invoices go out, I don't have to worry about covering my staff, my insurance, my cars, my, my whatever. And, Love it. And so we will close out once we have a, a million dollars worth of recurring revenue. And then what we will do is um, we will, so say, for example, just for easy maths, that's 600 clients, mm -hmm. right? I know that at that stage, I will close out our care plan product with what's called a discovery session, which means we take away all of the free and we get paid to uh, onboard uh, someone into that um, system. Mm. So, that, so that's when our kind of like our, our gears will change. Mm -hmm. Then we will focus on our growth plan and we will take our growth plans to a million dollars worth of recurring revenue. And what's cool about that is when we reach the 600, we can stop all forms of acquisition because the 600, it'll be out of them that we get 60 or 11, we actually need 11 uh, percent. Uh, so 66 of them, if they jump on our um, uh, 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 um, growth plan, that'll be another million dollars worth of um, annual revenue. And when we reach a, a million dollars worth of annual revenue, we will close that out with a discovery session, which means the channel's still open. You just have to pay to get mm. into it. Got um, it. I mean, you're, you're the, you know, again, the, yep. the paid discovery is stolen mm. from you. It's taken from mm. Mavericks. It's a course that, um, you know, is kind mm. of available. And at that stage, then we'll open up our signature system. And so wow. if you think about the, <laughs> I love it. If, if you think about the three motivating factors for a financial decision from a human being, they're uh, health, wealth, and relationships, right? So our yep. health is our care plan, right? Mm -hmm. That's a functioning website, <clears throat> you know, that solves all of the issues of having a website, right? The wealth product is our growth plan. So it's a performance mm -hmm. product. That's like return on investment, you know, all of that mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, stuff. Mm -hmm. Um and then our signature system, I haven't figured out yet. I, I know what our alpha one looked like, and I know that mm -hmm. I didn't like it, and I know that I won't sell it again. Mm -hmm. Our clients got good results, but we didn't make any money. That's why I don't, mm -hmm. didn't like it. Um, and so the care plan will probably be something with regards to a relationship with me, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it'll probably be where I'll come into your business and um, help in a little bit more. Um, the signature system, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I haven't so figured that one out yet. So how do you, how do you how do you, I know even I'm listening to this going and we had a conversation recently internally where I said you know I think there are two products that we should focus on over the next twelve months Mavericks Club and Sales Accelerator because they're the products that deliver the most value for our clients they're the products that we know how to sell we can you know let's not complicate anything we I'm not talking about our online courses by the way we're always releasing online courses primarily because we're producing those online courses for Mavericks. And then we say, hey, here's a sliver of it, make it available to people who aren't in Mavericks to get them some help, let them level up and also give them a taste of what it's like inside Mavericks. By the way, you're not stealing anything from us, dude. You're a member of Mavericks Club, so you get it all. You're not stealing anything. That's what it's there for. Um, how do you manage your FOMO? Like how do you just focus on going, we're not doing anything except focusing on selling care plans until we hit a million dollars in recurring. Then we're going to go after our growth plans. How do you manage? Because every day there's opportunities to go after something new. How do you stay focused and not get distracted? Um, well, we're already making money, right? So you know, our, our uh, ability to basically take cash flow and use it to buy other businesses is already there. Um, I'm not like a money person. I'm, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not like a Lamborghini kind of guy, um, mm -hmm. you know, or, or, or anything like that. Um, you know, but, you know, for, for me to, to, to reinvest in the purchase of new businesses gets me faster, you know, to, to gets me to where I want to go kind of like, you know, uh, faster. So for one, we're already doing all right. Um, and so mm. I, I know that that second channel is inevitability. Um, mm. By the way, that channel is open. So we do sell growth plans, although I limit it to 20 at a time. Um, mm -hmm. So um, if someone puts their hand up and is like, Mike, I really need to move into like phase two, that growth plan, um, you know, we, we will open up a channel for them. So it's not like it's not like it's like hard and fast. The signature system, I'm not worried about. 
um, you know, but, but you're um, not you're not focused on selling growth plans, right? If someone puts their no. hand up and says, "Mike, I really need some post launch services. You need to help me grow," then you'll have a conversation with them. But you're not focused on them, and you're certainly not looking at acquiring agencies to then pivot all their clients onto growth plans. Not straight away. For, for the, our, my, my the agency, uh, uh, the, the type of business that I'd like to acquire. You know, a, a perfect acquisition for me would be a thousand clients of, um, you know, like a hosting book where they're paying fourteen dollars a month or something like that, and they haven't been talked to in ten years. Mm. That that would be mm. a, a perfect acquisition for me, mm. because I just roll my systems over the top and uh, do that, um, you know, value stack. Uh, you know, mm. the, the, the product kind of like cadence, uh, you know, on top of it. Um, but. Um, secondarily as well, like I only have one SEO, I only have one digital marketing guy, um, I only have one data miner, you know, I only have one of those things. Whereas with the um, team, we're geared up to have a huge appetite for acquisition of website designer development. The other, the other thing as well is um, I haven't had to use the word web design, web development seo or digital marketing <laughs> to sell anything in since i started maps and so that's one of the other like really kind of like cool things about what we do is it's impossible to commoditize what we do for yeah. our competition and that's that i i, I this kind of like that idea of um how, how are we doing for time by the way do we have to wrap this up in eight minutes uh kind of <laughs> is that, it is, it is like, called the agency hour <laughs> We can get you like, back. We can get you back for part two. Because <laughs> I was thinking, like, if I go on there and I like, oh, hey, look, like, this is look at me, like, I'm doing all right. <clears throat> it's not going to really help other people, um, you know. I think of, this has been incredibly know. helpful. I think no, this but, has been incredible. But also, dude, I'm more than happy to get you back on for another agency okay. hour if you want to go deeper into something. I'm more than happy to do that because this, I like. This is super valuable and super helpful. And I'm, I, we could do a part two where you can go deep into something if, if that's what you want to share well, for sure. Because the one of the cool things that I think, <clears throat> like, if I, the so here, so here's like this confidence thing where say 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 you took everything off me, mm. you know those like shows where like people mm -hmm. get like like millionaires get kind of like stripped of what they do and then yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. go I don't care uh, that, that yeah. would be fine because I'd be yeah. I would be back to where I am a lot faster than the first time round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of those things where there's a, a very kind of, you know, like, like it would be easy for me to say if I was again, if I, if I was to start tomorrow with nothing, you know, like I could accelerate to where I am now and I could show you very clearly because there's not a single unique idea that I have in my business uh, that I came up with. Most mm. of it is taken from you and your courses and the like coursework and stuff, um, you know, stuff from, from Mavericks and, mm. um, you know, going to the Mavcons and, you know, kind of like being in the squadron. I mean, like I, I, I haven't been in any of the other squadrons in Mav, but mm. I kind of like think that ours is the best, you know, like <laughs> being, being able to talk each, you know, each couple of weeks with like people like Simon Major and, and, and watching, you know, like what it's, what it's like to niche down into a, a really kind of like focused environment um, seeing that nice guys don't always finish last with uh, mm -hmm. Adam Silverman and, and, and like his mm -hmm. business and, 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 and stuff like that. Um, watching someone like uh, Nicholas Dogulin kind of uh, really earn the right of passage to business ownership with all the shit that he's had to put up with in the last kind of like little while and, and just having access to all of those other guys like you could take that away from me. You could take my staff away from me. You could take my tech stack away from me. And, and I would be able to clearly articulate how I and other agency owners could within a month or three months, you know, definitely be in a situation where they could leave their job, you know, with enough recurring revenue because, you know, in that time frame, it's viable to get 10, 10 websites live on a $200 a month care plan and to sell a couple of growth plans. You know, it's, mm. it's the, the abundance out there. Uh, mm. I, I did the max for this. So if I get to my 600 clients in which I become one of those Ouroboros snakes who just feeds on their tail for the rest of eternity, right? Because I don't need any more um, clients. If I got them, I would be aiming at a 0.0000132% market share of just WordPress websites. Wow. Right? $3 million <laughs> annual kind of like business, 
plus whatever else I decide to sell. And we are um, not even a fraction, not even a small fraction of 1% kind of. You're way. not even the head of a pimple on the ass of the web world, right? So, okay, here's, here's my invitation. Would you come back and do a special edition of the Agency Hour where you walk us through exactly what you would do if you had to start again from scratch and you had no team, no money, no infrastructure, no office, no tech stack, and no Mavericks Club. Would you come back and, and do that with us? Yeah. It's cool. Awesome. I call it, there's a process that I call mining. Mining. Right. So, do you, so, so the thing that I'll come back and I'll, I'll show everyone, um, mm -hmm. you know, if there's an appetite for it. My, my, mm -hmm. Some people oh. might go, I'm not going to not sell people websites. That sounds there will be. There, um, there is an appetite for it. Let us know in the comments yeah. if you want Mike to come back and show us how he'd start again from scratch if he had nothing and, and, and you know, and had three months to pull it off. Let us know in the comments. I think there's an appetite True. for it, but go on. Yeah, so I can come back and I can show you my process, which is called mining, um, mm -hmm. which means that you can identify opportunities, uh, get in front of them, um, you know, win, uh, you know, care plans, position for growth, growth, growth plans and stuff like that um, without, you know, any real kind of uh, ad spend or, or, or anything like that. Um, and secondarily on that call as well, I could show you the frameworks of how I buy businesses as well, because that might oh, also. Yes. So that, oh, yes. So that one's going to be at, one's gonna be at how do I get started and how do I potentially leave my job into, let's say, uh, $5,000 a month recurring mm -hmm. revenue, kind mm -hmm. of like web business. Um, and the second one might be, hey, you know, we're making some money now uh, and I'd be interested to see how you acquire other agencies as well. That is I think those, awesome. Because I don't want like, I don't want to like just come in here and let people to be like, oh, good for Mike, you know, like, like, what, what do you do? Like, Yay, you, know, like, you. Well done. Uh, so Rory Flynn says he's ravenous for that. Ha uh, Hans Thompson says, yes, absolutely bring him back. James Murgatroyd says he's hungry and thirsty. Uh, Facebook user says, shit, yeah. Appetite, uh, yes, appetite, says Facebook user. So we're definitely going to have you back for another episode of the Agency Hour, and we're going to go deep into that. Um, so in the last couple of minutes we have left, what are you most excited about over the next 90 days at Gherkin Media? I'll get my other pod back. Here's a, so here's a here, here you go. We can finish up with a mistake I made. So I have an entire pod on a project that I sold to a friend. You know, there, there, there are, you know, kind of um, other things on the other side of it. Like an idiot, um, I sold a project for a fixed amount of fee and it's taken my one whole pod of mine. So that's like a full team. Um <laughs> ages like six months or whatever to kind of um you know get this website done and so i get them all back uh and so yes. you know we, you know we, we, it, it, it's people might think like those numbers are stupid mike why are you building 65 websites at, at you know a month and it, it all becomes like a level of kind of like scale um but yeah in the next 90 days i get and lee my new production manager who's like you know like thank god they're coming back um so we get um we get one of our pods back to focus towards our, our, our kind of like normal um, channel, which is just getting all of these people, um, you know, to, to, to the point where they have like a really healthy, you know, kind of like website and are on a care plan and, and stuff like that. Um, hopefully we can buy another business, you know, it, it would be, you know, it would be good. Uh, we are getting like, what's funny is, in between Mavs, so after my first run of Mavs and jumping into my second run of Mavs, um, we were able to do a website for Gurkha Media, which is uh, one like our own website. And so I have noticed, I have noticed that we all almost have like a name now. Um, so a couple of things are like, you know, people will touch base with us. Hey, would you like to buy my business? Um, Colin, who was just sitting there before, he's an intern from America. And huh. we got, we rang, Hey, will you take interns and, 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 and teach them over like 10 weeks, which is kind of cool. You know, wow, that's, that's, that's cool. cool. <clears throat> um, I'm looking forward to doing your two latest courses. Uh, the, um, the stuff, the one around your staff and the one mm -hmm. around, uh, the discovery sessions and stuff like that. So I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to doing those. Um, I always look forward to my squadron calls at Mavericks and my catch ups with you. You know, it's, it's nice to have, you know, as I was saying before, it's really nice to have access to other, mm. you know, not just high-level agency owners, mm. but the, but the rest of the 
guys in the squad and the guess, get, get rest of the guys in the, in the Mavericks. So mm. um, looking forward to obviously having access to you because you're really good at showing me where I'm about to stub my toe and, uh, you know, showing me how I can avoid stuff that I'm blind to, you know, which is amazing and, and, and invaluable. Um, and uh, ultimately it's, it's, it's one of those things where there's no ifs in, in my game anymore. It's just a matter of time. You know, we will close out these care plans. Right. I love it. I'm, you know, by the time I'm 40, I was talking to you the other day. I don't know why I have yeah. this, like by the time I'm 40. Yeah. Kind of I mean, problem. it's a milestone, dude. I've got, I've got goals that I want to achieve before I'm 50. I've got about 15 months to do it. So I'm, I'm on a mission. Um, one of the most rewarding things about working with you in Mavericks is just the action that you take. And you, I mean, I know you've been through most of the training several times you go back and you rewatch yeah. training six months later because you, you, you know, and you've said, I'm, I'm like, dude, why? And you're like, because I'll pick something up because I'm a different person now than I was six months ago. And I'm looking for different things. I'm looking for different clues. So it's been, yeah, I rewatch Mav- I, I rewatch Mavcons as well. Mm, it's been amazing. You, you, might to- say that, you might say that like, that's because you're a dullard and you didn't pick it up on the first time, <laughs> through, you know, but I know what these are for. I mean, that might be my biggest trait, right? Yeah, and I'm yeah. good with this, you know, like yeah. this is the money maker. But I, I know what my ears are for and and, 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 uh, and I'm not – it's like almost kind of like that martial arts thing, right? If, if the, yeah. the minute you think that you're no longer a student, yeah. the, you're going to get your ass over. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. It's so that's true, that's man. It's so true. That's, and that's, that's why fundamentally it's so, so easy and, I mean – should I look at the course corrections that I've had in my life? And, 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 you know, even if I just stuck to the kind of like business ones, you know, getting Lee massive course correction. So here's my shit business. Here's my poor performing business, you know, doing nothing, you know, a higher Lee and it's, it's like this. And then I can join mm-hmm. Mavs and it's like this and, um, mm-hmm. you know, and, 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 and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it's uh, yeah. Awesome. Love it. Well, thank you so much for being on the Agency Hour. It's been awesome working with you. I'm looking forward to keeping working with you. And we will definitely, I'll get the team to reach out and definitely hook up a time to come back and do part two of this, where we go deep into mining and acquiring agencies. And uh, everyone's looking forward to that, as am I. So thanks again for being a part of it, Mike Sprout. Really appreciate you, man. Yeah, no, I think that's the best way that I can add value. It's not just to talk about myself, but to, to, to give some you know, give the, the other people in the community the tools to, you know, get out there and do what I do. And the reason, two reasons I, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I like that is one, it's so abundant. And two, I do feel like I do the best work for my clients. You know, mm. like it might have been all numbers, but we have 0% attrition, right? Mm. So, That's you know, Christ. it must be that we, you know, like for me, it's about the relationships. It's, it's, it's not all numbers and dollars and stuff like that. Uh, I treasure, yeah, every, treasure every one of my 350 current, you know, client clients and, and will treasure the next 250, uh, you know, just, j- just as much, you know, so if I can show the rest of the community how to invest into the relationship, you know, to organize your staff and your systems to become efficient and to go and find, um, you know, the type of business that suits this model because it is abundant. It is extremely abundant. Um, I think that's the. I think that we could wrap this thing up saying that yeah, okay, Mike added some value back into the Mavs community. Um, you know, without just talking about himself for an hour. So. Awesome, love it. Anna's already added you in the guest pipeline to be on the show again. So there you go. The system's awesome. already working. Fantastic. Thank you, dude. Appreciate you. Look forward to having you back for part two. Enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers, mate. Talk soon. Thanks, Mike. All right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Wow, mind blown. Cannot wait to have Mike back. Uh, That is another episode of The Agency Hour wrapped up here in the Digital Mavericks Facebook group. Uh, If you missed it, I've resigned as CEO of Agency Mavericks. Emily Bryant has taken over. She's based in Christchurch in New Zealand, and she's awesome. Reach out and say good day, and also reach out to Mike at Gherkin Media and thank him for the episode and uh, look forward to him coming back in the near future to do part two of that. All right. I love your work. Thanks for being a part of it. I really appreciate you tuning in. Makes it all worthwhile. Uh, If you're listening to this podcast, come and join the Digital Mavericks Facebook group and be a part of it. Watch the podcast. It is a video show. Uh, Leave some comments. Get involved in the conversation. And if you think that you know someone who would benefit from listening or being a part of this show, then share it with them uh, and give us a rating and, and leave us a comment. Let us know who you want to see next. Let us know the kinds of 
things that you want to learn and discover, uh, ask any questions, and we'll do our best to keep bringing the best content we can here on the Agency Hour. All right, I hope you all have a great day. I'll catch you next week. Until then, I'm Troy Dean. Bye for now.